Hi, it's Beamer Zen, and in this short video I will be doing a brake fluid replacement on my new car. This is the Z4 2012 model year, and this is the S-Drive 35IS model, so E89 platform. And I got this car a while ago, and I got a message that the brake fluid needs to be replaced. So on these cars, the brake fluid needs to be replaced every two years, so I'm doing this job now. And I'm not going to go into too much detail, this is just a vlog style video, so I know what I'm doing with the car and I just want to document everything that I am working on. Okay, so let's get into the brake fluid change. So first you have to make your car hover on the ground so you can just remove the wheels and get to the brake calipers. I am using a vacuum extractor that works on compressed air. You can get them quite cheaply on the eBay or on the internet. And then you just connect the vacuum hose to the brake caliper and you have to use 11 millimeter wrench that you have to put on before you put on the hose. You need to undo the cap on the reservoir to let some air in. Then you open the valve to apply air pressure, create vacuum, and only then you undo the nipple on the brake caliper, so the vacuum is already applied when you are starting to extract the brake fluid. This way you can prevent bubbles from forming inside the brake caliper. I already extracted the fluid at the back and front right, so the order is back right, back left, front right and then front left. So this is the last caliper I have to do. Okay, let's open the air. And it started to extract fluid. Okay, I've extracted this much fluid and it's nice and clear. So I know that this caliper has now new fluid inside and the front left has the shortest path to the DCC unit and to the reservoir which means you don't really have to extract that much. On the right pair of calipers I extracted about two canisters and the fluid was much uh, darker. Okay, let's remove this. The bleeding nozzles have to be torqued down to 15 newton meters. Here I can compare the color of the new fluid and the old fluid and as you can see this old one is pretty dark. It's not that bad but it was definitely due to be replaced. You are going to need about 2 liters of fluid to do the flush and also make sure that you are using fresh new container that is still sealed to do the replacement because after a while the moisture from the air gets into the brake fluid and it's no good. I am using DOT4 LV fluid, which stands for low viscosity, and this is the specified fluid for my car. I'm using a syringe and a piece of hose to suck in the brake fluid, and then I make sure that I don't spill any of the brake fluid on the car because this fluid is not good for your paintwork. It makes the metal rust very fast, so be careful. And then I top up the fluid as I go, so as the fluid is extracted, I just keep adding the fluid. So you have to make sure that the reservoir is always full. And now that I'm finished with the last caliper, I'm just gonna make sure that I top up the fluid to the max level and I should be done. I've just came back from a test drive and I realized that the brake fill is rubbish. So the braking point on the pedal was different, way, way lower. And also the braking force was not as it used to be. So obviously something went wrong. So I decided to bleed the brakes in another way. So another way is to apply air pressure to the brake fluid reservoir and then open the bleeding valves on the calipers and let the air out that way. So not with a vacuum, but with air pressure. So I 3D printed this part. This is a free model that I found on the internet and it fits a standard one quarter inch tread and an air adapter. 
So if I remove the cap, I can just put this instead and screw it in. And then I just connect the hose from the air compressor. I'm going to apply one bar of pressure on my regulator. Okay. There is a tiny amount of leaking going on, but it's so little that it doesn't really matter. So this solution works great. It doesn't need to seal 100% to work. Now I'm going to open the bleeding nipple and let's see some bubbles. Well, this one wasn't that bad. Okay, let's stop the bleeding. I've closed the valve, so now I can remove the cap. And now I just have to top up the fluid again to the max level and I should be done. Okay, so now we just have to unlevitate the car. I've just came back from another test drive and this time the brakes work perfectly. So no spongy pedal, the braking point is back where it was. So I can conclude that Bleeding the brakes with this uh, vacuum adapter or vacuum device is no good. So if you can, if you have an air compressor, you should definitely get something like this or 3D print it yourself or make it yourself and apply the pressure from the reservoir and bleed the brakes that way. So I guess you learn something every day. We're now inside of the car and we need to reset the service interval for the brake fluid. So first what you need to do is press the button once and once again. And then if you have any service warnings, you just have to let it sit there for a while until the warnings go off. Otherwise you cannot get into the menu. Okay, so now we are in the normal mode. We just have to press the odometer reset button for 10 seconds and the triangle comes up and we are in the menu where we can reset the service. Now we can scroll through the services with the stock button on the left so we can move up and down. And the first item on the list is the most important one. So in my case, this is the brake fluid warning. But if I cycle through all of the warnings, I see that I also have a worn front brake pads that needs to be replaced. I know about that and I already have the new discs and pads ready to be replaced. Then I have next service and this is probably a state inspection and the oil change and then the rear pads and when i go to the next menu i'm back at the start okay we are now back in the brake fluid reset mode so what we need to do is reset the interval so we have to press the button on the stock and it will ask us to reset we press again and now we have to hold it and it resets to the next interval, which is in two years. I am a bit late with this fluid change, but I think it's not too bad. So if you just leave everything as it is, it will just revert back to the normal mode. And if we check the menu in the iDrive, we can see that the brake fluid is uh, reset and also the March of 2025 is the next fluid change. And we're done. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing and keep zen and continue the art of BMW maintenance.